Hey y'all, it's your girl Miss Dia from the show ATL Radio down at 89.3. Tonight, I'm so excited. Like y'all probably can see it all over my face. We're uh, sitting down with some of the dopest female MCs. And not just female MCs, like these sisters just dope MCs, period. So we're sitting down with them tonight. Uh, down to Cloud Nine, right before Sunday Night's Live. We're getting live today. But anyway, um, big shouts out to Creative Loafing for making this happen. And then to all of the sisters that we sat down with tonight. We're going to sit down with um, Book Brown, Lyric Jones, Star, Cyrock, Adrift of Bell, and Khalila Ali. I don't know if y'all understand what that means. If not, go Google them and then check that list out again. All right, y'all? So don't go anywhere. This is Miss Dia, 89.3, the show ATL Radio. They call me Space Age, not just because I touch down. I bust down brick walls, crumble the dust beneath the sneakers. Y'all don't understand my train of thought. Take you past the fall. Peace. My name is Cyrock. I'm an MC from Washington, D.C., a transplant to Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm here with some of the dopest sisters in the game, uh, MCs, poets, producers. And we're here to let our voice be heard, you know, represent as women in hip hop, as just MCs, period. So I'm excited about it. Peace. I'm still dope, even if the bag ain't coach Even if I don't smoke till the hydro roach I'm still dope, rock a thrift store coat And a fresh pair of moccasins Comfortable for walking in, no A&R marketing This is my reality, still dope Power walk, burning off the calories Peace family, this is Star, I'm here at um, Cloud Nine, and we're about to do a roundtable discussion with some of the creme de la creme of the female MCs in Atlanta. We really have, I think, the best in the country. I'm just going to put it out there, and if and if you disagree, then come with it. But anyway, um, <laughs> very high dosage. My approach is lights out, greatest notches. Hold my glasses so I can get rid of Send them home, tail tuck, holding they did it. Cold as a Guinness. One point miss. Yo, chill, watch the table. A fish we have several, I mean, phenomenal in so many ways on the mic. I think there's some producers as well. Um, we got some published authors as well. So we're just really multi talented and we're here to have this discussion and build and um, bring um, the scene in Atlanta even further into the foreground. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes we're considered to be the, the mythical creature of hip hop, like the unicorn or something. But we exist, there are many of us here. Grew up in HP, mama raised me to be a champion. No limits, no backing up, no begging for a handout, checking for a man's clout. Gotta get it how you live, no time to pout, no time to doubt. Yo, what's going on? This is Book Brown. How you doing? Detroit in the building all day, every day. Just came out here to uh, represent for the uh, female and hip hop round table with Creative Loafing. Very beautiful experience. Very dope. Very, very good energy. Like all these ladies out here representing. All these ladies out here working hard, doing their thing. I'm so happy to be in part. I'm so happy to be involved. I'm really glad Creative Loafing reached out to us and just gave us a platform to say what we needed. So I appreciate it. What's up? It's Adrift the Bell checking in from the uh, Creative Loafing Roundtable with uh, some of the best female MCs in Atlanta. We talked, we laughed, we bonded. It was a good look. Um, big shout to everybody involved. It was great. Thanks for having me. DNA, July. DNA. The EP. Drugs. Drift the Bell, DNA, Guard State Parkway, iTunes. So mellow, teach guitar heroes the basic of heavy metal. Green, red, blue, green, red, then yellow. No, 9mm or dot 3 8 special. Reggae tone the remix, cause he ninja so special. This is Drift Fight. When I'm done, y'all can come back. For now, it's Pink Scar, Arch Brothers. Just look around, it's awesome. Like back 
when I was five and terrified to fly high. Funny now, not a soul can get me down from the sky. Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Lyric Jones. Here at the round table discussion that I had with all my big sis. I'm the baby of the crew. So um, it was really, it's a really good opportunity to, to really get our perspectives on the table, where the industry's at, um, our different projects, our different outlooks on the game, the music. Um, so it was good to kind of, you know, represent the younger generation, I guess, because um, I haven't been doing it for 20 years, like a lot of them. Um, so it was just a really good opportunity for me to, to really be asked to do this, because I guess, you know, it's showing that I'm making my mark, you know, on the scene to be respected as one of the, the, the best female MCs out here. So. It's a pretty good experience. Hey, I'm Khalil Ali. I'm a Atlanta MC, Youngstown, Ohio born, Atlanta bred, fed, grew up here, been here about 20 years. And it's beautiful to see the way the scene has really cultivated some amazing women artists that are diverse, uh, articulate, really challenging some, some ideas that folks have about women and, and just amazing, amazing artists. And I'm just honored to be a part of this. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where the movement is going. Peace. Today it is such an honor to be here with some of the dopest MCs who happen to be female. As far as you guys, well you ladies performing, um, where does that fearlessness come from and I can do this? For me it's two things, it's, it's kind of like therapy because you go through so much um, in your life period you get you get a chance to get on stage and you just release you know um, so that's one part of it the fearlessness for me personally comes from growing up having all kinds of insecurities and issues and growing into myself as a woman and being comfortable with myself so when I get on the stage I'm like this is me what mm -hmm. and Indeed. and that's where the beast comes from and I, you know I like that word I'm a beast <laughs> you know? it's not even it's, it's, it's like a alter ego it's me but maybe a higher me I don't know but I feel like something comes over me because then there's times when I'm in my professional self and I'm very you know blah blah blah, blah. but then the stage and I may have absolutely no intent of going that route but okay. something like you know I don't know what you call it the Holy Spirit Ego, I don't know what name you give it but something occurs and it's just a spiritual experience what's some of the crazy things people either ask y'all or expect of you all as a writer and you can talk from anything um, from a, working with a producer you know like damn relationships on yeah right. yeah Really? Oh, like a yeah. great concept. Uh -huh. See, I'm in the club and you're this girl that I'm just really out of my league and I'm just like, dude, I am intelligent. Can we right. talk right. about <laughs> quantum physics or harp or <laughs> Something you know, the spiritual else. realm, something like don't put me in a box. I've only had that issue that. when I've had other guys try to you know, when I work with other women and it's never really the producer, it's always like the male MC that was like, Yeah, I had this like duo situation where you were like, Yeah, that whole relationship situation. But a lot of times if it's a producer that hits me up, they're like, Yo, I want you to go in. Right. Because that's the lyric they've heard. They haven't really heard, you know, me get, you know, kind of on that other level, which I've had before, you know what I'm saying? But most times when people hear Lyric Jones, it's on that 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 escalated level on, on you know, on stage, mainly people hear me on stage first okay. um, before they hear the record. So um, I don't really have that issue unless it's like, you know, another MC that wants to collab with just me and they're like, yeah, so I was talking about a relationship and then you were doing this and I was doing that. So then trying to put the whole concept in the whole situation. So, okay. Or they try to holler at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, then they get right. mad. Let's get and up. And don't want to work with <laughs> right. you no more. Yes. Right. Let's collab. Yes. Really because don't. you're not trying to hear it like that. And it, it really is always disguised that just disguised as let's collab. Yeah, let's, let's get up. Let's yeah. work. You got to work. Let me get your number. Up. And then you calling me, but you calling me on some next right. and not calling me on no yeah. business. Right. And that's okay. not I don't have a project because my music is being held hostage right now mm -hmm. on some you know, what's up with us, Ma? No, what's up with you? What's up with you? What's up with that? But you, you really don't think people that you cool with or you spent these hours and hours creating with at some point gonna go there with you, even though it's happened a billion times. You say, not this dude, because it's not him. We've talked right. about this. Mm -hmm. right. And inevitably, for some reason, it just comes out. And it, it to some degree, I'll speak for myself, has stunned me. Because mm -hmm. I don't have dough to be up in the studio. Now, right. I take. I've got $500 just going to that. I'll pay. I will pay a stranger 
before I go here with this again because of the enemy situations and you just can't get your and music. That's messed up. That's messed up. Because they don't do that to each way. other. They don't uh -huh. do that to each other. Right. Well, sometimes they do because it's an ego thing. It's more ego driven, I, I find, with a lot of males than it is with females because it's it's more like, you know, oh you're not oh you're not trying to do this, oh you're not trying to do that. Even with guys though, it's like mm -hmm. they be on their ego shit. And I'm like, you know, at a point you have to set that aside and just be it's about the music. It's about the work. About the business. Yeah. For the most part, it, there are so many subjects that touched. Um, what what's like some of the frequent topics that you got you all like feel is necessary to write about in today's time. Yeah. For me, like elevation in all, all, all no, senses exactly. of the word is, okay. is important because we deal in hip hop, you know, we have, of course there's, I'm not trying to pigeonhole or make a general statement, but a lot of times like, you know, we deal with some real base stuff, yes. you know? So in order for my growth, I speak to um, a lot of meta metaphysical concepts, um, ways to elevate yourself spiritually. Because um, I think that now is the time, like yeah. we're being bogged down by so much negativity. Um, Absolutely. So much, uh, so many distractions that keep us from, you know, rising to our higher selves. So that's one of the main themes in anything that I write, anything that I write. Ditto. Yeah. I'm, big, I'm, big on, I'm big on like going back, you know, you know just being kind of like, really kind of the youngest in the scene really kind of doing I, I'm real big on like <laughs> I'm real big on going back and knowing my history mm. and really like this has all been done before you know like even like Those some some of these shows like topics they've, they've been done like the whole jazz and hip-hop show aspect things have been done and my job as Larry Jones is bringing my perspective mm -hmm. to the table we here are MCs. You know what I'm saying? That's the, I think that's the thing that's different because these women are women. I don't ever look at none of them and be like, that's not a woman walking there. That's not a person walking there. That's not a spirit that I can't connect to. I know I've cried on many of these women's shoulders. Like, just on some regular, just on some, I am a woman. I have feelings. I am a person. I have feelings and I want to, I can relate to it. I can relate to it and I can relate to it on any level as long as it's honest. Like. <clears throat> Once you get away from that honesty and that vulnerability and that human aspect of things and that spiritual, that you disconnect yourself and I can't mess with it. For me, I have an image, right? And and when people think Khalil Ali, okay, I want them to think certain things about me mm -hmm. and my music needs to reflect that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's that's just good, you know, defining who you are. Right. Yeah, just defining right. who you are and where you fit, right? Mm -hmm. But when it gets down to when that it ends, it begins at the brand and ends at the brand and if we start pulling back and stripping and taking off your wigs and your shiny shit and you're nothing. You're not even a good rapper. <laughs> what if people look at you as if like you're a sellout if you decide to go bigger than exactly. what you're doing? You like, oh, you're going to get a deal? Like, that's like, it's like automatically a deal with the devil if you're considering a deal. Considering right you a deal. <laughs> and I'm like, but you got a family. This is the music, right. this is love, but it's also about commerce. The beauty of being an independent artist is you don't have to be at the bottom of the total pole. You can make a million dollars. Mm -hmm. I can make a million dollars if I did the right thing quicker than Waka Flocka. To be honest, as an unsigned MC, but we, what we don't do money. is we don't look at our shit as a product, as a commodity, as, as a business. business. So in that, we, we fail, we cheeks. often fail. <laughs> Y'all saying like it's not possible. You look at Rick Ross. I'm Rick agreeing Ross, with you. Rick Ross is a liar, right? Right, he He's is. He's been rapping about the same thing since he came out, right? <laughs> and he, I'm he sorry, but I cop, like dude. Right? <laughs> he, he was a, he was a CEO, oh, yeah, right? So he, he was underground before he became mainstream. It's possible. It's just we put ourselves in this female box sometimes ourselves. ourselves. Yes. You got, you all have um, definitely changed how people see female MCs and then MCs that's based in the South. Um, how much of a role has adding like a visual aspect to it? You know, having videos. How, um, how important is that to you all? And did you all notice any change in your, you know, like your career or how many people following you on Twitter and all that stuff um, after you all have done some, some of the videos you've done. Yeah, that's so big. Cool. I mean, that's, that's the way people connect, you know what I mean? By seeing a visual, that aesthetic, like I know that's the way I do, but like that's the way you can form like a perception and that's what people do. So 
I noticed that when I started like, you know, taking pictures or videos, I got so much more, mm -hmm. um, I got so many more people finding out about me and who I was. Mm -hmm. and plus YouTube, I mean, everybody's yeah. on YouTube. Even if it's, I found that even if I do a video about me eating food, yep. yeah. that's people seeing me and knowing my name as Sarah, and then they go, okay, let me see what else Sarah is doing. Yeah. I'll go to another video, you know what I mean? So visual is, visuals are very, very important. All right, well, ladies, it has definitely been a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure. Um, one thing that I will leave with you all, and this is something that when I saw this quote, I was like, okay, maybe it'll make sense, but I try not to put too much um, responsibility on us. But Coretta Scott King once said that if the soul of a nation is to be saved, women, we must become a soul. And I will say that when it comes to, you know, your music, a lot of fellas, fellas, y'all, again, y'all know we love y'all, but a lot of fellas kind of missed or just kind of were so involved in hip hop that they kind of like didn't pay much attention to the soul music of, you know, the 90s and stuff. And your music is evident that like y'all hip hop but you are also so so for that reason we thank y'all y'all keep doing what y'all do love y'all dealing and uh, much success to y'all thank you